Console applications enable you to create custom commands that you can type in at the Windows command prompt. In this lesson, I'll show you how to create a backup command, which allows you to type daily backup in any directory at the command prompt to make a copy of a specific file. So go ahead and open your Visual Studio and click New Project and click Console Application and let's call it Daily Backup. So here is where we need to type our code that's going to copy the file. And let's find where our file is. On D in work, I have a file called report.pdf. And I want to back this up whenever I type this command into C backup. And it's going to be in files like this that have a timestamp on them. So let's go ahead and do that. First, we have to define the backup file name. So let's call it backup file name equals, for instance, um, what was it called? Backup report. And then we need the current date time, which is date time now, to string. And then we're going to have to format it. And this is a date formatting string. We want a four digit year, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, the second, and the millisecond. And then plus PDF. So that's the backup name. And then we just need to copy it. We'll type file and we need system IO. So we'll just click on that file, copy, copy it to D or copy the file D work. That's where I put it. Report PDF. So that's the file that we're going to copy and we're going to copy it to the backup file name. And that's all we need. And so if this executes uh, correctly, it's just not going to say anything, which is common in commands at the command prompt. But I want to give an option, as you sometimes see on commands, where if you type daily backup and then slash V, then it'll give you verbose information. That means information about the file. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll notice here is args, that stands for arguments. And these are the arguments that are coming in from the command line separated by spaces. So we can just say if args, the length of the string array, args, is greater than zero, that means if there's anything in there, and the first one equals give me verbose information, then print this. Let's say backup, backup file name is, and then just the backup file name. And then also let's give the size that it was. So we'll say we need to get file information. That's file info equals new file info of the backup file name. And then just go ahead and show the file size, which is length. So fi length, and that's the size of the file in bytes. And that's it. So now let's create our exe file. The way you do that is first you have to save solution. Make sure you save it, close the solution and save it if it's not saved. And then when you're in it, say debug build solution. And then you want to go to where your project is on your hard drive. So here we are in projects, daily backup, daily backup in bin and go into the release folder and you'll see an exe file. Just go ahead and copy that. I'm going to copy it to a tools directory. This is my work directory and see tools. There we go and copy it in. And if you do a lot of commands like this, then you want to have a tools directory where they all reside. Now, let me show you what doesn't work. If you go into your command prompt here and type daily backup, it doesn't work because it can't find this file. So what you have to do is go into your environment variables. I'm in Windows 7 here, so you can just follow along or it's similar in the other Windows versions. Find path. What I just did was typed P to get to path here. Double click, press end 
go to the end and semicolon C colon backslash tools. So I'm saying if I type a command and you can't find it in that directory, then look in all of those other directories. And the last one is in tools. So for this to take effect, we have to go out and come back in. Now, if I type daily backup, then it did indeed work. Now let's see if it made the copy of the file in backup. Let's go ahead and delete these. And we'll see. So daily backup. Yes. Daily backup. Yes. And daily backup slash V. And it copied it. It gave us the name of the file and how big the file is. So in this lesson, you saw how to create a custom Windows command with the Visual Studio Console application project. You saw what you have to do to get your command to execute no matter where a user types it. And you learned how to pass parameters into your command to alter its behavior.